So do you, you, you effectively retired from mixing in 97. Um, yeah. uh, that's a while ago now. What have you been doing with yourself since then? Well, I was very lucky because um, a lot of people work at the one job forever and they're very conscientious at it and they, it ends whether they get too old or they get the sack or they're retrenched or I don't know, maybe the, that, the game changes so much. And they're very, and I've seen them and it's very sad. They're, they're good people who can no longer participate. I've always been mad about sport, mad about it. And um, whilst I speak very Australian, I write rather, rather well. I write very correctly. Um, so I started writing about rugby when I, when I was still mixing movies. And I used to write a lot of stuff about the, that were for rugby, rugby union test match programs. And um, I wrote for two years for the Telegraph here in Sydney. Um, so I started writing some sporting books. And I'd still do a lot of guest speaking at, at uh, sporting functions. So I, I sort of morphed out of that into this. You become a writer. Yeah, so I was really lucky. Have you ever thought about writing a screenplay, writing your own movie? No, everything I've written has been biographical. I've written a story on Les Darcy, a famous boxer in the World War I time. Um, a rugby tour of England, 27-28. Um, Boy Charlton, the great swimmer from 1924. Um, so you could write a biography. Well, I've, a biopic. I, well, I could do that. I've, I, actually, I actually did one on Les Darcy, and I actually presented it. I played on the ABC about 2000. We still, we still sell a copy now and again called um, Les Darcy, The Maitland Wonder. This is a documentary. It's a docker. Right. Yeah, about him. But a mate and I also made two films. This Hayden Keenan, who I mentioned, who was one of the first two boys when they, we mixed 26A. Mm. Oh, 27A, sorry. 26A was a wine, that, by the way. That was a that prequel. Time. No, that was, no <laughs> it was a red wine when, when there weren't many about. 27A, um, Hayden Keenan, he and I made two documentaries on the Wallaby touring party, you know, like the Wallaby team. Um, and I did write a script for Tony Buckley only about oh, a couple of months ago on, an old, on some, a, a film he made on old trains, old train tracks. Mm. Um, it's called Ghost Trains. Tony Buckley produced a lot of pictures that I mixed. Caddy, um, he produced the one for Jimmy Sharman. And he started um, out in um, editing. He was an editor with Wake and Fright, whom he Correct. was part of the restoration of that. Yeah. Correct, which was a fabulous picture, wasn't it? Mm. Gee, I'm not sure we ever made a better picture than that, actually, Wake and Fright. It, well, it's only half Australian. It's a Canadian director, yeah, after Yeah, sure, all. sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Who was he? Ted Kotcheff, wasn't he? Yes. That's yes. right. Uh, yeah. But I know Buck cut that. But um, so I've written, I've written stuff for film. And it's funny, you know, when I write my books, I sort of write them like I mix the film. Um, for instance, I wrote a book on Les Darcy, the boxer. So he had 52 fights. So I had coverage of every fight, essentially. It might be a little bit, but I, I had newspaper cuttings and so on. And if I was lacking some, some info prior to the fight, I'd just write info prior to fight and keep going, which is what I had to do in the movies. I couldn't stop there when you got two weeks to mix it. You'd have to say, come, we come back and just replace get, holder there get and... this music re-recorded or something and yeah. go on. So it, it's sort of, the film thing sort of um, has taught me my uh, rhythm that I sort of work in or, mm. or, or, or live in. Um, so that's how I did the, 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 um, the, doc, the um, biographies. It was almost like a film. I knew what was going to happen here, here, here. And I knew that was, I'd leave a page and a half to describe that fight. I know it was a great fight and I'm going to get three coverages of it. And it was important because it changed his career and so Been on. any interest in having those optioned for a film by anyone? No, I tried so hard. I, I pleaded with pleaded with Peter Weir to Les, the Les Darcy story is extraordinary. I pleaded with um, uh, the guy Peter also. Weir. Yeah, I, I with Peter. Yeah, and, he's, and he wrote he wrote me a lovely letter. I've got it in there. Um, I regard biographical pictures as I do serpents. To be <laughs> be careful of them. <laughs> What a great answer. He didn't want to do that because he wants to create his own thing. Yeah. Uh, but I spoke also to um, Simon Winsor, who did, um, he did Farlap, he did, um, um, no, he did Quigley Down Under, yeah. Simon, yeah. Um, and he did 40,000 Horsemen later. I didn't do that. But with him, when he was doing Lightning Jack, Les Darcy was a, a, a boxer, World War I time, and he was the greatest fighter in Australia, and he was certainly the greatest fighter in the world at his weight. Anyway, he... he um, 
he was Australia's most famous sportsman by a long way. Mm. As famous, say, as, as, as who's the most famous sportsman now? Farlap. Um, well, Farlap was. <laughs> well, Farlap was too. Yeah. Um, it's a fabulous, fabulous story. Couldn't get anybody interested in doing it. Oh. Should have been made. If he was American, they'd burn that third remake now. You know mm. what I mean?